And honestly, like I said, I've been on this weight loss journey for a long time. I've done this this song and dance so many times. And if you are tired of going around the same mountain too, tired of doing the same song and dance, tired of starting your diet every Monday, tired of starting, oh, I'm gonna go to the gym this day, I'm gonna go to the gym that day, it's time to just lock in. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sierra, and here on my channel, we are all about creating a life you love. So that being said, we're gonna hop into today's video. So for those who are new, I am officially down about 56 pounds. I had a highest starting weight of 210 pounds, but my conscious efforts started with a weight of 194. My current weight is 135 pounds and my goal weight is 130 pounds. So I'm very close to my goal weight. Um, but today I'm gonna be giving you guys a few of my daily habits that have helped me get to this place um, that help me feel better, you know, mentally, spiritually, physically throughout this journey. I know the weight loss journey can be very taunting. I'm a person who feels like I've been on a weight loss journey my whole life. Like I have been around this mountain many, many times, but this time is the time that I finally got to a place of comfortability. I feel good in my skin. I feel confident. Um, and I feel like these tips that I have here today will help you guys kind of get on the same path because in reality, you can get online. There's so much information about losing weight. Some people say do Pilates. Some people say do strength training. Some people say just walk 10K steps. Some people say do HIIT workouts. Some people do like CrossFit. Some people do like different stuff when it comes to weight loss journeys and you should be doing something different than what you see online anyway because your body is unique your body is different they're gonna say calories in calories out and that may be true but the calories in and calories out like thing it can't just be this whole calculation thing that you just rely on you still have to realize who you are your habits um, your health issues that you may have your height your age your physical activity like all of these things go into play when it comes to having a weight loss journey and I'm gonna help you guys with these few tips that have helped me along the way like I said I've been around this mountain a few times but this is the time that I finally got under like 150 pounds. So that's major. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and hop into my first tip today. And that is going to be establish routines. I know that's probably like self-explanatory, but sometimes when people lose weight, it's like, okay, I'm gonna go to the gym after work or before work, or I'm not gonna go to the gym today. Like it's like no consistency within the routine. So I feel like once you figure out, you know, your standard routine for your weight loss, it'll help you a lot along the way. Consistency is key with anything you want in life. If you are consistent and you work hard at it, more than likely you're gonna get that thing. And so when it comes to this weight loss journey, you have to be consistent even if things are moving slow, even if things are moving fast, like be consistent, stick to your routine and everything will kind of just work out for you, I promise you. Um, my personal routine starts in the morning. I'm not a person who likes to work out in the afternoon, but I will work out in the afternoon for like extras type of things. Or if I miss my morning workout because I have a doctor's appointment, I will honestly like go to the gym in the afternoon, but preferably I like to just do it first thing in the morning and like get it over with, get it done with. So for me, my day kind of starts around like five, six. Um, I get up um, and I just go straight to the gym. If I'm not going to the gym, I'm doing a YouTube video right in my living room. Um, that's convenient. Honestly, if you're not a person who knows, like I'm not going to get up and go to the gym, start with YouTube. It's free. You don't have to buy any apps, do any of that special stuff get on YouTube. They have every kind of workout you can imagine. If you want to buy a treadmill and just do it at home, I'm sure they have treadmill workouts. They have Pilates workouts. They have hit. they have weights. They have everything on YouTube. So use YouTube first before you start to go pay people, trainers, like all of that. Get on YouTube. It is free 99. And you know, whether your routine looks like working out, reading, stretching, walking, just make sure you're incorporating some sort of routine, whether you do that at the end of the day to wind down or you do that at the beginning of the day to actually just kind of get your day started. So like I said, I'm a morning girly. First thing I'm doing in the morning, I'm grabbing my pre-workout and I'm going to work out. 
So next I'm going to go into healthy eating. And when you say healthy eating, that can be very nuanced because some people say, oh, it's just about balance. It's about planning your meals. It's about doing this. It's about doing that. Oh, you can eat pizza. You can eat French fries. And it's like, you have to figure out what your body likes. I can't eat like that. Like these people will get online and say like eat in moderation. I have to eat clean if I want to see the results that I want to see. And moderation does not mean I can have something every day. Moderation may mean like, you know, I can have one cheat once a week or one cheat every two weeks. Like you have to have that consistency. Like I said, on the front end, that kind of helps you with your healthy eating. And this can start by like, you know, actually plan out your meals. I think a lot of the stress comes in when we don't actually have preparation for these kind of things. Like if you come home every day and you're like, what am I going to cook? You get overwhelmed with what am I going to cook? And you just end up like at Chick-fil-A or end up at like Texas Row House. Like you just end up somewhere that you're not supposed to be because at the end of the day, these places do have healthy options, but it may not be the accurate calories. They're putting things in the food. This may make you inflamed. You may be eating more calories than you actually think. So it's just best to honestly on the weight loss journey, cook at home or yeah, it's just best to just like cook at home, like just in general. But if you're a person on the go, what I like to do is I like to get on TikTok and find like healthy fast food options that work for me. But I say the best thing you can do is to have the preparation for yourself and plan out your meals ahead of time. Something I like to do is I like to cycle sync. So I like to eat meals according to where I am in my cycle. So for instance, right now I am in my follicular phase. So let's just actually, I think this is very easy for you guys. And I think I'm going to do a video um, because I got a few people asking me to do a video on like what I eat in a day, like cycle syncing edition. I just don't know where I want to start with it. Should I start like where I am in my cycle so it can be easy for me to kind of like follow along or should I just kind of like go in order? But anywho, I'm in my follicular phase and you can just go to Pinterest. You type in follicular phase foods. They have recipes. They have meal books. They have like literally like I say meal books, cookbooks. All right, so we have a literally here on Pinterest. I'm gonna screenshot and put it here. They have a follicular phase grocery shopping list. So things on here are like artichoke, broccoli, microgreens, lettuce, dandelion greens, arugula, green peas, string beans, beets, um, avocado, lemons, limes, oranges, grapefruit, papaya. So those are like plants, fruit, and veggies. So these are things that you can have in your refrigerator. So like frozen cherries, I have tart cherry juice. Um, we can do like some Greek yogurt, full fat cottage cheese, sauerkraut. Sauerkraut is like a natural probiotic. I keep sauerkraut in my refrigerator. Try it out. I promise you, your stomach will love you for it. Um, some proteins to kind of keep on hand would be pasture raised eggs. Now, I'm just having a real conversation with y'all right now. Pasture raised eggs are expensive AF. They're like eight bucks. So, I mean, I pay, I just go ahead and bite the bullet and pay for it so I can make sure I'm getting quality stuff. But like essentially, if you cannot afford that, try to get some like, you know, cage free or free ranged or organic. Like just try to make sure it's a better option than like, you know, the 99 cent or the 199 eggs. Like try to find a better option for yourself. It says wild cut salmon is good right now. White fish, organic chicken and ground turkey. Um, so for me. It kind of just depends on where I'm at in my cycle. I like to follow plans like this. They even have things that you can put in your pantry. They have lentils, chickpeas, quinoa, coconut flakes, almond butter, collagen, olive oil. So like you get the gist. Like you can get on Pinterest every single cycle and figure out like what you're supposed to be eating and you can make like meals out of this. And if you're really smart, you will use my personal assistant. And her name is Miss Chad GBT. You can put this grocery list into Chad GBT. Put all of the things that you don't like in here and say, can you make me a meal plan according to this list so I can make sure that I am eating appropriately for my follicular phase? But I think I'm going to do a, a cycle syncing video just because like, a lot of the stuff on the list, it may not seem like appetizing or... Something, some of this stuff people just probably don't eat. So I'm going to show you how I doctor a few of these things up just because like, 
I feel like healthy eating can be kind of taboo because people are like, eh, I'm not really interested in trying that. But like cycle syncing is going to be a game changer when it comes to, you know, your healthy eating. Some healthy eating habits that I actually established here along the way is I actually simply just eat less. I am a person who would eat until I was stuffed. Like that's how I knew I was done. If my belly was hurting, if I had to unbutton my pants, I'm like, oh yeah, she's done. But now I'm to the point to where I eat to where I'm satisfied. But that takes like, time because your body has to get used to you eating less and you may feel like I'm starving myself but sometimes in order to lose weight you got to be a little hungry and I'm gonna just say it like that it might sound crazy it may not sound realistic but like sometimes you got to go to sleep hungry like and you you're honestly probably not even really hungry you might actually just be like dehydrated or if you don't want to go to sleep hungry something that you can also do is eat more volume and that will come from like eating more fruits and vegetables. So say for dinner, you have a piece of salmon, you have a baked potato. Okay. You have your protein and your carb, the place to where you can get yourself extra full, load up on vegetables, do cabbage, do broccoli, like do two vegetables instead of just one vegetable. A lot of people just do like chicken, broccoli, and rice, but like you can add so many more vegetables and usually vegetables are lower in calories and they're going to make you feel a lot fuller because they have a lot more fiber and there are a lot less calories. And then you can actually be satisfied when you go to bed after dinner. So that is something that kind of helped me some volume eating and actually just eating less. Um, I'm at the point where I didn't really count calories at the beginning half of my um, weight loss journey, just because like, it's just it can be tedious. Um, I was using my fitness pal for the longest and then they just changed up and they're like, Oh, yeah, you got to have the premium plan to like scan, you know, your barcode. And I also feel like they don't have like a lot of the foods that I eat in there. So I kind of just stopped using it. And I just started eating less what I would normally cook, I would only eat half of that. I learned to listen to my hunger cues, learn to know when Sierra, you need to stop eating. Something that I also do now is I throw out excess food. And I know when the economy is very bad right now, and we don't have food to waste. But if I go out to eat, I throw the rest away sometimes because like I had a point to where it was like I would just eat and eat so much and like I would be full at the restaurant because the restaurant probably gives you four to six servings anyway. So I would be so full at the restaurant. I'll pack my to-go box and when I get home, I'm like, all right, I got a little bit of room and the food would just literally be calling my name and like I had zero self-control. So honestly, I just started throwing it away because it's like I didn't need the excess calories. If I already probably ate half of the meal at the restaurant, that was already probably two to three servings. So it's like it's no need to just go out of control like that. And I honestly blame America because we just eat way more than we need to. So honestly, I just throw the food out or I don't bring the food home. It's like you don't have to eat everything. You don't have to take everything. And a lot of this actually stems from childhood because a lot of our parents, not mine, because I ate all my food, but <laughs> a lot of people's parents did not let them leave the dinner table unless they finished their foods. So because of that, people have established an unhealthy relationship with finishing their plate when you probably don't always need to finish your plate. Another thing that I do for myself and my fiance probably hates this is I don't have junk food in my house. I do not buy junk food. And if I absolutely need junk food, I'm buying a healthy alternative. If I want ice cream, I'll go get these um, Yazo, 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 I'll put it on the screen. They're like Yazo bars. They're Greek yogurt ice cream. They're like 100 calories per like ice cream pop. Um, I get the mint chocolate chip because I'm a mint chocolate chip girly. I know a lot of people hate that, but I love it. Um, They also have this good like chocolate fudge brownie one. And they're they're like 100 or 90 calories. It's only four in the box. So you can't go too crazy with it. They also have protein in them. So that's always a good thing. So I have like, you know, healthy alternatives in the home if I absolutely need it. And usually only when I absolutely need it is like around that luteal phase or if I'm on my period, I just need it. It's it's natural. We're women. We, We crave these things. So if you do absolutely need junk food, find healthy alternatives to your junk food. If you're a person who likes potato chips, 
chop you up a potato thin, put a little bit of spray oil on it so you're not ODing it with the oil, and throw it in the air fryer, and you got some, like, chips right there. So it's like we have to find, you know, healthy alternatives that work with our lifestyle. Um, another thing I say is, like, I don't have – junk in the home so if I absolutely if I'm having a cheat day if I'm having a fun day we do that outside of the home I'm not ordering pizza to the house we're gonna go out to a pizza restaurant and have the pizza at the restaurant I'm not bringing unhealthy foods to the house if I want ice cream like I said I have that healthy alternative but I'm not bringing like full fat ice cream in my house I'm just not because I don't have the self-control always to not eat it all. So I think the best thing that you can do is have these things outside of the house. That way you're still having, you know, the balance, the moderation, have it outside of the home. And that way you're more than likely to only have, you know, one serving versus if you buy like a gallon of ice cream, I don't know how many uh, servings are in a gallon of ice cream. Let me see. In a gallon of ice cream, there are about 32 servings. So instead of having 32 servings of ice cream in my house, I'm going to go get a healthy alternative of ice cream and it's only going to be four servings in the box or I'm only going to have one serving of ice cream because I'm going to go to the ice cream parlor and get a scoop of ice cream because the thing is like if you have it in your home, I love cookies and cream from uh, Baskin Robbins and have them put like whipped cream on it. It's so freaking good. But I bet you not, I would never bring that in my house because two scoops is already too much. And I probably would eat like four or five scoops. So I just don't have it in the house. So instead, I'll go to Baskin Robin or another place that sells like cookies and cream ice cream. And I'll have my one scoop and call it a day. But that is how you put a little bit of control and parameters around like having fun with foods. Like you can have fun outside of the house. If you want to have fun inside of the house, just make sure, you know, it's a healthy alternative or you just make it at home. Because a lot of the times when you make it at home, it's going to be less calories anyway, because you're not putting all of this filler stuff in it. You may not get all of this inflammation and bloating from just like chemicals and stuff that you don't know what it is. So just have healthy alternatives or make it at home. Next, I'm kind of going to go into mindset and self-care. Some of my mental like habits that I like to do is something that I feel like is kind of like an inconvenience. It can be an inconvenience, but I actually need this time. I have like a pre-workout car time, prayer time before I go to the gym. Every day before I pull up to the gym, I probably sit in the car 20, 30 minutes. I drink my pre-workout. I listen to music or I pray or I kind of just really sit with myself alone and just kind of hype myself up for the gym experience. Just get myself in the mood and get myself ready because sometimes it's like we're always on the go, on the go, on the go. But what time do we actually have to just kind of sit with ourselves and realize what we're actually doing? I like to go work out because A, it helps me look great in my body. It helps me feel great in my body. But two... It's just good for my mental. It's good to move your body every single day. And it is like a privilege that I can actually get up, drive in my car, go to Lifetime, a somewhat luxury gym and have a luxury like experience while I'm working out. I can go work out. I can steam room. I can sit in the sauna. So there's like so many opportunities where I can kind of just chill. So even outside of just that car time at the gym, When I'm done working out, I like to go sit in the sauna. I'll listen to some meditation music or I'll watch a um, informational video. Sometimes I'll read my Bible app. Like I like to spend time like in the sauna, just kind of like locked in. And at the same time, you know, saunas are good for your health. I don't know why, but they are. I know they help you sweat out toxins. I also heard that it's good for your heart at some point. So if you have access to that, give it a try. Um, Something that I also like to do is when I take a shower, I like to listen to like, you know, sound baths and pitches and tones. Um, It just helps me feel like I'm really just relaxing. Like I said, we live in this world where it's like constant like go, whether you're working out. So it's like you got to work out. You got to make sure you're making money. You got to make sure you're paying bills. Um, we live in America. Everybody has to have some sort of like side hustle, like to make extra money. Like 
it's always like an ever going system here. So having that time to yourself, like in the sauna, in the shower, to really just sit with yourself and sit with your feelings and sit with your thoughts is good for your self-care. It's good for your mental. Another thing that I kind of just, it's not that I just started doing, I just don't do this often because I think I have arthritis in my right hand or I injured my right hand when I fell off the Stairmaster um, last year, two years ago. Um, but I hurt my hand really bad, so I can't write with it too long. But what I've been doing lately is my friend suggested, like, I start to write out my feelings because sometimes I think I've gotten to the point where I've learned to disassociate from, like, what's actually going on because I've had so much trauma, like, growing up in my life. Um, I really just disassociate. Um, I start working on these projects, these passion projects. I start making YouTube videos. I start building out whole businesses because I'm disassociating with my feelings. So something that she suggested to me was actually just start to get my feelings out on paper. So times in high stress, I've actually started to write out my feelings, um, write out how I feel about food because I have like you have to heal your relationship with food too when it comes to a weight loss journey because a lot of the times that's what it is. It's your relationship with food. So sometimes I write about like how I'm feeling about that. Another thing that I like to do is this is what I actually do. I like to script my future. Um, it still hurts my hand to do this, but this is something that I do more than writing out my feelings. I write out my future. I write out what I want my life to look like. I write it with emotions and I write it as if this has already happened. I wrote out, you know, where I am in life literally today. Like I wrote out, oh, I moved to Texas. I made six figures. I have a nice apartment. I'm getting engaged. I'm getting a home. Like I wrote all of this out in a journal and it is now true. So there is power in writing things down. So make sure you are doing that. And this will help you with your mind. Like some people feel so stuck in their situation and that they don't have any power or anything they can do to change it. They feel like they pray and nothing happens. But sometimes you really have to get into vibration. You have to get into character and really just feel the emotion and visualize your life better. Um, I don't know if that's a Pisces thing, but like I live literally in a dream world and I feel like I deserve a happy life and I feel like I deserve to feel good. So sometimes I do have a little bit of that escapism. But I like to get in vibration and visualize what I want my life to look like and what I want my life to be like. And it always works out for me. So people be hating and saying I'm in a dream world and stuff like that. But hey, maybe people need to actually get in a dream world to get the things that they actually want in life. Another thing that I think is important is to learn to take care of your body. Just kind of like slow down. Like when you're putting on your lotion, like really rub your lotion in, get oils, get body scrubs, make sure you feel good, your skin is soft, you smell good. Like these are important things for yourself. Something that I felt like I didn't really realize, like I didn't feel like I grew up in an environment to where it was important to like do self-care and like do face mask and prioritize like what kind of lotions and stuff that you use, how you smell. So that is something that I take like a little bit more time with now here in my life. When I'm in the shower, I like to put on my oil in the shower and then I get out and put on my moisturizing cream. I do have a few like perfumes, but I don't really like to spray perfumes and I'm very conscious on what I put on my skin because I did have a, a cancer scare from my thyroid and what people don't realize is our skin is the biggest organ that we have and our skin absorbs like everything and like I just said we live in America and they put so many chemicals in all of our stuff so I do say be mindful of the things that you actually put on your skin try to go for more natural things like body butters um, you know essential oils like stuff like that when it comes to body care because you may be smelling like, you know, cherries and stuff like that, but it's not good for your overall endocrine health. So think of it like that. So another thing to kind of just keep in mind is how you actually look. Take pride in how you look. I think I had got to a point to where I was so uncomfortable in my skin. I would just wear big clothes. Like I would only wear stretchy clothes. I would never dress like cute because I didn't feel comfortable in my skin. And I would say, 
please don't do that guys like, dress cute no matter where you are in life because i honestly feel like that holds you back from being the person that you actually want to be just waiting for that perfect moment to be the perfect size because now i literally went from like a size 10 to like a size four slash six and now I'm like, I've gone so long without wearing cute clothes and things that I like. I don't know what I like. So now I'm to the point where I have to shop for every single thing. I need new panties. I need new bras. I need new undershirts. I need new shorts, pajamas, clothes, everything. When I tell you guys I cannot fit anything, my freaking engagement ring is so big. It's a great con to have. But I have to shop for everything like all over again. But this gives me an opportunity to really do some, you know, self-care work. Figure out what Sierra likes. What kind of clothes does she like? What kind of colors look good on her? Like it's, it gives me time to really pour into myself. Because like I said, I felt so uncomfortable in my skin for so long. I, I hid myself forever because I was literally ashamed of how I looked. I felt like I was not in the right body. And I think that's because deep down, my inner self knew I was not supposed to be a big girl. So now I'm not a big girl anymore. And it's time for me to show up as the person that I was writing about, scripting about, visualizing about. Like now it's time to really show up as that. So now we're gonna hop into really building a sustainable workout routine. I'm kind of toxic here in this space. So I'm going to give you guys some healthier habits to approach now that I've learned because I've come to a different place. But like starting off, I used to work out like crazy. You see this Apple Watch right here? That Apple Watch had to say at least a thousand calories for me to go to bed. Like nobody is thinking about burning a thousand calories per workout like I don't think people really think that but that's how I was but I feel like that kind of really helped me lose the weight a lot quicker this year because that was my goal I had to burn a thousand calories and I would like to do it in one sitting and if I could not do it in one sitting say on a day that I had to work my actual job um well I work my actual job every day but a day that I actually had to go in the office I would get up go downstairs to my fitness center get on the stairmaster Say I only burn like 500, 600 calories, something that I would do on 15 minute breaks at work. I would just walk laps in the building so I can get my steps and so I can burn like excess calories because a lot of the times um, I've, uh, I have a whole video dedicated to this, but as a short girls, our metabolism is a little bit slower. We're shorter. Our calorie expenditure is much smaller than the average. So we have to move our body a little bit more. So that was an absolute game changer for me. It's like, okay, yeah, I did like go aggressive with my cardio machines, but also on days where I couldn't like go aggressive if I wasn't working at home and I didn't have that time to do that, I just moved my body more. I walked at work. Um, I walk around my neighborhood. I walk my dog just to get those extra steps in. So now that I weigh 135 pounds and not 194 pounds, not 180 pounds, not 170 pounds, not 160 pounds, not 150 pounds, I think I really started to notice this change when I hit around the 140-ish mark or in the 140s. But it became so much harder for my Apple Watch to move. I used to burn minimum, minimum 700 calories working out on the Stairmaster. Now, in an hour... If I'm working really hard, I can burn 400. But like, I be going like level 15 on the Stairmaster and I only can burn 300 to 400 calories. So I had to really shift my mindset and my perspective when it comes to working out. Now, I don't really focus on the number. I just focus on making sure I'm moving my body that day. Um, what I now prioritize is actually I do some strength training two to three times a week. Um, like I said, I use YouTube because it is a free 99. Um, and I think that's also been a game changer for me. I didn't really like to do strength training that much either because it kind of makes me bloat up. It sends my body into a state of stress almost, I feel like, because it raises my cortisol, it raises my testosterone, so I can't do it that much. And I know this because I've got my hormones tested. I've talked to my gyno about this kind, these kind of things. But what I do now, I found a low impact strength training workout that works really great for me. And I love that for me. It's an old video from the early 2000s. And I know I make that girl a lot of money on YouTube because 
I watch that video a lot during the week and I do it a lot during the week and I've even put like my friends on. So it's like this lady making a lot of money from us. But anywho, I prioritize the strength training two to three times a week. Um, I still like to do a cardio machine because that feels good to me. So I still do the Stairmaster for an hour. I burn my little 200, 300 calories and I call it a day. I don't really think about it too much. But something that I've been really prioritizing here lately is my 10K steps. So if I can't burn, you know, a thousand calories in my one little sitting like I used to, I now make sure I'm doing my 10K steps a day. Um, I did work out this morning. So right now I'm at 5,000 steps. Um, the weather is kind of changing, so it is good to walk outside. It's not super hot in Texas, but with the weather change, I have like asthma problems. So something that I've been doing here lately is just walking my apartment building, walking each floor, going up each stairs, walking the floor, and then walk back down just so I hit 10K steps. And then it's like, all right, you got your movement for the day. And that is more sustainable to me than me staying on the Stairmaster three hours just trying to burn those thousand calories, like just me prioritizing moving my body and really just going with that because you can't be too obsessive with numbers because like I said, the heavier you are, the more, I think it's easier to burn more calories, but the more and more you start to lose weight, you do have to, you know, adjust. And I had to become less rigid. Like I literally would be like, oh no, I have to burn a certain amount of number of calories a day. But now it is so hard to even touch that in one sitting. I had to stop being so rigid. So something I do, and I've been doing this previously, but now I really prioritize, like honoring my cycle. Like I said, I do the cycle syncing. Um, so let's just go to Pinterest really quick because I told you guys this before. So let's do follicular phase workouts. Okay. So here's this little chart. I'll screenshot and put it on the uh, screen for you guys. In your follicular phase, this is the time that you can do some light cardio exercises. And then once you hit your ovulation phase, that's the time to really go hard with like the cardio and the hit. But this is like your body building up to the point of, okay, your body's trying to make a baby. You're trying to, you know, get you're fertile, like you're trying to ovulate. So your body like really amps up during that time. So you have a lot more energy. But right now I'm in that follicular phase. So I feel myself kind of like going up like after my period. These are things that you should be practicing daily. And honestly, like I said, I've been on this weight loss journey for a long time. I've done this this song and dance so many times. And if you are tired of going around the same mountain too, tired of doing the same song and dance, tired of starting your diet every Monday, tired of starting, oh, I'm gonna go to the gym this day, I'm gonna go to the gym that day, it's time to just lock in and build a sustainable lifestyle for yourself. Start implementing daily habits that will help you get like closer to your goals. It doesn't have to be extreme. Nothing I said on here is too extreme. The only thing that's probably extreme here on this list is throw out your um, leftovers or don't have junk food in your house. But this honestly is setting yourself up for success. If you don't have a good relationship with food, if you don't have any self-control, you have to control your controllables. Okay. Say you were, you go out on a date and you guys, he, you have all of this excess food. Your controllable is don't bring that food home. And if you don't want to seem rude and not take the food with you, take the food with you. And when you get outside, throw it in the trash. Don't even bring it into the house. I don't know. I didn't have no self-control, so I couldn't even bring it into the house. But like I said, I don't think this is extreme. I think this is just simply taking care of yourself, like mind, body, and soul, so you can feel good in your skin, so you can feel good in your clothes, so you can stop dodging pictures, stop dodging the mirror. Like, that is no way to live life. And I am just now realizing that at almost 30 years old, I wish I would have got to this place like much sooner. I feel like I wasted a good portion of my 20s just not being comfortable in my skin and not being comfortable in my skin came with me not really loving myself, me not feeling worthy. And that is not a place that you want to really be. So it's time to implement these daily, you know, habits and really love on yourself. You only get one life and you don't want to live your life with regret just because you don't feel comfortable in your skin. So anywho, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really hope this video helps. If you guys have any suggestions or videos that you would like to see, leave it down in the comments below. 
and I will talk to you guys next week. Bye. Yeah, she making that shake, breaking that bait till the bed.